Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the graph stuff. And <coughs> code and which parts of it working. Uh, so this is going to be under the graph directory in the 202 class account. There's a few files here. Start with um, graph. Now I'll start with these um, text files. These are some example um, text files, and let's see. I will. I'll do this. Put a few pictures in. So I'll put a few pictures at the end here of graphs that we're going to be looking at. Um, so C4 is a cycle with four vertices, A, B, C, D. And let me just draw um, what I have in mind here. So four vertices. So graph has vertices and edges. Um, let's see if we can give these labels. Doesn't look great there, but all right. Okay, so that text file is supposed to now represent this this picture and um, there's a <coughs> uh, four there to say there's going to be four vertices. It's an undirected graph and unweighted. These are the vertices and then I have a list of the edges. So A, B, that's going to mean that there is an edge from A to B, which I will draw with a line. Okay, so there's an edge from A to B, and it's undirected, which means there's no arrows, and it's unweighted, there's no weight or number on the edge. So A, B, and then we have B, C, C, D, B, A, B, C, C, D, and B, A. That's C4, C for cycle and four for the number of vertices. We can put something here that says this is C4. Okay, um, and I'll put a comment here. Um, this graph is C4, cycle, um, four vertices. The cycle is just a loop. So that's c4.txt. We have a few other example graphs here. Peterson. Um, if we look up the Peterson graph, okay, there is a link here. Probably named after somebody named Peterson. Okay, there's a picture of the Peterson graph. And what I've done is <coughs> I put in a comment down here A, B, C, D. E, so A, B, C, D, E, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the labels that I'm giving to the vertices. It's 10 vertices, undirected, unweighted. Those are the vertices, and then these are all the edges. And you might want to pause and just take a look at the list of edges I have here. Check a few of them that this is actually correct. All right, that's another graph. And last, I have Indiana. So I have eight vertices here. Um, I just picked eight cities. Terre Haute, Indianapolis, Lafayette, South Bend, Fort Wayne, Evansville, Gary, and Richmond. So those are going to be the labels of my Indiana graph. 
and then um, for the pairs of these, I just put the travel time in between them according to Google Maps. All right, <clears throat> so now we can, those are some example graphs. We're going to go ahead and look at the code. First, we'll run the code. We have something compiled. Uh, G. And the way this is supposed to work is I run it and then I give it the name of a file, which should be a graph file in the format we were just looking at. So we have the number of vertices, either directed or undirected, weighted or unweighted, the labels for the vertices, and then we have the edges. And if it's a weighted graph, then the edge gets a weight. If it's not a weighted graph, it would not. So if I run it like um, before, as the parameter, then it just read that in and printed it out. Okay, now to the code. There's graph.h which has a definition of a vertex, an edge, and a graph. Inside the vertex we have a label, and um, two things that we're not using yet, a parent pointer and a distance. Um, an edge, An edge has a source destination and weight. Graph has a number of vertices. Uh, Boolean variables to say whether it's weighted and directed. Here we have a vector, which is an array of vertices. And we have an array of edges. Okay, there are various methods. Um, so our, everything's going to get started with the open. First the constructor, and then the open. So the open is going to happen, and that's going to be in graph.ppp. So we'll go ahead and look for that open. <coughs> so this is uh, taking a file name as a string, so it would be like peterson.txt. We go ahead and open the file with the IF stream. And if you want a simpler example of that, you would go back into the TPP directory and look for the appropriate file there. You can go ahead and check that files.tpp. If you wanted to look at that again, you could. Right, so we open that file. Um, checking for errors does not happen at the moment. Um, and then we read in just the order that it's supposed to be. So first we read in n, the number of vertices. We read in the next string, which is supposed to be directed or undirected. And the next string, which is weighted or unweighted. So if the string is weighted, this would get set to true. If the string is directed, this would get set to true. Read in the labels. Uh, there's going to be n of them. So we read it in, create a vertex, set the label, put that onto the vertex vector. Then we read in the edges, repeatedly we read a source and destination. If what we read for the source has a pound, uh, we assume that um, we're done reading the graph. So that lets me put comments at the end. And then the first time it sees one of these pounds, it'll just stop reading. Okay. If the graph is weighted, we need to read in a weight. That happens here. So that would be three different things. A source, vertex, a destination, and a weight. Once we have those, we're going to create an edge variable. Put the weight into the edge. And then we have to go back and look at the edge class. So the edge class has a vertex pointer for source and destination. 
and what's coming in in the file are strings. This means we need to go and find those strings back in this vector right here, this v um, <coughs> vector of vertices. I have a helper function here, look up v that does that. It takes a string and it looks up in the vector of vertices for that string to find a pointer. And so that will go for the source and the destination. If either one of those returns null, there's some problem with the label. So if they're both not null, it's, a, it's an okay edge. We go ahead and put it on. If, they are, if one of them is null, there's this, there, we'll get an error message. So this would be potentially if, um, if we had a mistake, um, maybe like this or something like that. Okay, so that's reading in the graph, and by that time, um, everything would be read in. Um, you can pause and look at the lookup <coughs> function there if you want. Now this is going to be used in the graphs.cpp program, which pound includes uh, graph.h. There's if argc is less than 2, there's the usage statement. And if it gets past the usage statement, then the, the open is called with that file name. And then we print. Um, one mildly interesting note here. So this right here, what happens there is it goes and looks at the graph class. So the graph colon colon looks at the graph class and looks for a file formats function. Now I want you to take a look at what's different on this line versus say this line here. These are both calling functions inside the graph class. Pause. What's different? All right. Now the difference is here we have g, which is a variable. It's an object. Here we don't have an object. How can we call a method in a class without actually having the object of the class? In C++ that's called a static member um, method. So here I have a file formats function inside of my graph class and it's called static. That means it's really just a function. It doesn't actually have any um, object associated with it. Here when we call print adj list, it's really calling it from the g variable. This one here doesn't have a variable associated with it, it's really just a function. Okay, so there is your uh, your C++ trivia or whatever for, for this video. So, plus plus OO stuff, static member method, okay? Now we know about that. <coughs> All right, and then the next thing that happens is the print ADJ list function, which let's just run that again. Let's see if we did the dot slash g c4 dot uh, We see this printed. That means that this print must be printed. Go ahead and check that out. There it is. All right. So first we have n is printed, and then we have either it's going to print weighted or unweighted depending on the weighted variable, and this is the ternary operator. Ternary just means three, there's three parts. If this is true, then this is what is pulled out. If this is false, then this is what pulled out, and whichever one it is, that's going to go to the C out. All right, so that happens, and we have the list of vertices. Print the V colon. And then each each vertex um, 
from 0 up to the size of that vector. V bracket i is a vertex. And to know what is inside of a vertex, go back here. So anything that's a vertex has a label. So there's the dot label. New line at the end of that, and then we have the edges. So there's E to signal the start of the edges. We go from 0 up to the number of edges. And then we output each one. So a parenthesis, just for display, we have E bracket I dot SRC. E is a vector. E bracket I is a edge. And if we look at the edges, SRC is a source pointer. It's a vertex pointer. Okay, so we have E bracket I dot source arrow label because it's a pointer. All right, if it's directed, then I'm going to print an arrow just to show that this is the source pointing at the other. If it's not a directed graph, I'll just print a comma. So I just have just a comma there. The C-string graph, or the C4. Well, I could think of it as directed or undirected. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so we have the source, and then we have the destination. And if it's a weighted graph, then we print the weight as well, and then the parenthesis. So one thing that we could add in here, just as a check, would be if, um, if either one of these pointers, so if e i dot source is null, or e i dot destination is null, so if either one of those we probably should not, try to do this arrow, because that would be dereferencing a null pointer. Alright, and that is it. Uh, to compile this, we have d++, uh, graph.cpp, and graph.cpp. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put that in the, in the top of the graph.cpp file. All right, at this point, you might want to pause and maybe tell yourself basically how everything's working for a second. All right, the goal for right now is to go ahead and we had pseudocode for a BFF function. Best first search. All right. And um, maybe we'll um, take this, this here and just kind of show what breadth first search would be just to remind us. Maybe not that picture. All right, we'll just kind of talk about it. Yeah. Let's use a different, we have a different um, graph here. So let's go back to maybe this one. Sure. Let's see if we can insert that one over here. All right. Okay, so breath first search. What we're going to do in breath first search is we're going to start at some particular um, spot. And maybe we want to. All right. So to say this is what we're going to search from, and at all times. We're going to have a frontier that 
which is things that we still want to look at. And let's say um, I'm just going to do some drawing here. And we'll make, let's see, we'll make those um, maybe these will be these will be circles that are not um, filled in. Okay, so at any given time we'll have circles that are not filled in that are things that we need to explore. And we'll actually say that that's what our that's what our start vertex looks like before we do anything. We just know that we want to start looking from there. And then we'll have things that are done. We'll fill them in. And we're not using color because some people are colorblind. All right. All right, so BFS. And we have, and you can look up the pseudocode um, wherever you like to look up pseudocode. Um, we had some typed in here for basically what happened um, in terms of code, but just walking it through in terms of the picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to take something off of the frontier, and we're going to add its neighbors to the frontier. Right now there's only one, and then this becomes filled in. Okay, this one's done. Then we go and um, take something off the frontier, that's this one. We'll add its neighbors to the frontier. And it is now done. Okay, I'm just going to leave that. Um, then I take something off the frontier, say this one, add its neighbors. This one we've already seen. Um, so any new neighbors we add to the frontier, and it's done. Maybe we add this one, let's see, maybe we add this one to the frontier. And then this one is done. And we keep going like that. All right. That is doing a search. We keep looking at things that we haven't seen before and um, exploring all of their neighbors. All right, the pseudocode that we have is over here, so I'm going to copy this over to graph.cpp, and I want to have a function called This will have to have a start vertex, so I'll give it a start. That will be a label. Okay, I'm just going to review. Um, What, um, what we want to do here. All right, so for each vertex here, I'm going to end up with a distance from the start. So just as a test, uh, for this vertex here, what would be the distance from this one? If it's an unweighted graph, we're just counting that as 1. So this would be 1, 2, 3. Uh, this one over here. One, two, three, four. All right, each vertex is going to be the distance. 
and we want to keep track of how we got there. Um, so this one here, we say that this is its parent because that's how we would get there. And if we were drawing a path, um, we could sort of draw it uh, with an arrow from however we got here, then we'd say this vertices parent is this one in the path. All right, I have that in my in my vertex. I have a distance and I have a parent. And then I will initialize those to something. So I'm going to call a um, init algorithm. So in my initial algorithm, initialize the algorithm. It's going to initialize each vertex right here. And then the initializing of vertex that's at the parent to null, distance to negative one. Negative one just to say I don't have anything right now. Okay. So that's the initialization. All right. So wherever I'm starting from, first I have to figure that out. So I'm going to have to have a vertex star, say, um, S equals lookup start. All right, start as a label, but now I need a pointer to that vertex as a, a vertex uh, object in the vertex array. If this is null, then nothing happens. Otherwise, we move on. Okay, so the first thing that happens is the parent of myself, so the person that you start with, um, we're saying that 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 person's parent is itself. Just to say something that's not null, and then that distance is zero. If I'm here, how long does it take me to get here? Zero. All right. Then we have a frontier to keep track of. And this frontier is either going to be a stack or a queue. And which one we use. So we keep track of the frontier. We take something off of the frontier. Question is, do we take the last thing we added? Or do we take the oldest? If we have multiple different vertices in the frontier, do we take the oldest one? or the most recently added. Okay, for BFS, we're going to take the oldest. So the oldest is going to be the one that's closest to where we started. All right, so I'm going to take this as a skew because that removes the oldest. So I'm going to have a UE of vertices. So this would be my frontier. Okay, and then I just want to start off by adding s frontier.nq Alright, and as long as the frontier is not empty, we're going to do something. I'm going to have to check on the names of these functions here, but I just want to get through the, um, the code. Right, so I want to remove off of the top of the queue. Right, so this is from here dot front, and then from here dot those functions are in a minute. Alright, then I want to go through all the neighbors of V. Alright, so that's going to require um, looking at the edges, and just as a start, I'm just going to go through every edge. Okay. So 
how do I tell if an edge is from Z? So if E I dot well source or destination, that's what's inside of an edge. So if either one of those is Z, then this is a neighbor. So we're going to have a vertex star u equals ei dot, well, source or destination depending on which, uh, which one it was. So let's say in this case, if ei dot source is v, then ei dot destination is the other side of the vertex. If the destination is Z, then the other side is the source. Okay, so if we if we found something. Alright, then we have U, and we want to look at U. So this is the case where we have something that's on the frontier, that's Z. So we might be looking at this right here that's on the frontier. Um, U is on the other side of V, so U is either going to be maybe something like this or something like this. And if it's new, if we haven't seen it, we want to do something. And if we haven't seen it, then it's not going to have a parent, and the distance is going to be negative 1. I'm going to check the parent. So if u parent is null, then u is new. So we want to say u parent is v. That's how we got the u. And the distance to u is the distance to v plus 1. Right, my distance is however far this was plus 1. And then we add u to the frontier. Because we found something new that we need to explore. That, that might be the end of right, That's pretty much the algorithm um, modulo checking on the, the names of these functions. All right, so what do we do? This initializes all parent to null, all distance to zero. Um, start vertex. Initialize the start vertex there. Frontier. So what do we do? There's a frontier. Frontier is initially just the start vertex. And then we repeatedly remove a vertex from frontier. Check its neighbors. Easy. Alright. That's the code that we had. There's something off the frontier. This we're using to check the neighbors. It's not particularly the most efficient way to do this, but it will work for now. When we find a neighbor, then if it's new, it has a null parent, we go ahead and save the path. We got to u from v. Distance is one more. Put it on the frontier. Now let's go ahead and look up the q operations. Okay, in Q, there is a function called empty. There is a function called front. 
Um, then we have functions called push and pop. So instead of NTU, we have push. And instead of DQ, we have pop. The rest of those are valid. We're going to need to pound include um, Q. Okay, there's that. Um, we'll we'll add to our um, our code here. I'm going to get rid of the rest of the stuff. Um, as a side note, um, I had some stuff typed in here. This pound at zero makes it so the compiler doesn't look at this part of the code, which is an easy way to, if I, rather than commenting out a bunch of stuff, this makes the compiler not look at this in terms of uh, looking for errors or anything. So that's, it's like a comment, but it's, the compiler doesn't even look at it. Right, but I'm going to get rid of that. Stuff. All right. So here we have, uh, we open a file, we read it in, this prints it. Um, before we print it, I'm going to do BFS. Um, but I want to do BFS from the first vertex. So as long as there's a vertex. So as long as there's one, then I'll do g dot v bracket zero. I'll do a BFS from the first label, and then I'll print. So I'm going to update my print here. Here's my print. Um, so for each one of these uh, edges, let's see from each one of these vertices. If I happen to have a um, information there about a distance, then I'll print that out. So if um, vi.parent is not null, that means we must have done a BFS and we must have found it. Um, so then I'm going to print here in parentheses, you know, these little square brackets that we'll use. So I'll say this came from, where did it come from? vi dot parent. I'm going to use something else here. So I'm going to use the square bracket. Okay, so the parent. I'll do it like this. Okay. I just want the, the, the information to be on the screen in a way that we can get it. Okay. So if there is a parent, I'm going to print the parent, and then there's an arrow to show it went from parent to uh, the vertex, and then I have the distance there as well after a comma. So compile. Okay, 
let's run this from c 4txt um, Right, so I want to print the label. Um, what it's actually printing there is a pointer. So when you print a pointer, that's a memory address. There's a memory address. I want to print the label, so arrow label. All right. Um, the first vertex there is A, so going from A to A is zero. Okay, zero distance. Um, to B, so there's B. B is at distance one, that makes sense. C is at distance two, you go to B and to C. And then D is at distance one because it's right next to A. All right, let's say that we run the Peterson graph. If we run the Peterson graph, um, let's see. The first vertex listed there is A. So A to, let's see, B should be 1, C should be 2, D should be because you could go this way. Okay, so there, uh, the distance to A is 0, distance to B is 1, distance to C is 2, distance to D is 2, and so on. Alright, there's breath for search. We have a breath first search. So what you might want to do is just take a quick pause and review that code. What is it basically doing? And that's a good amount for a video. Um, next up, we'll be taking a look at what's the first homework assignment having to do with this code. Have fun.